Looking around, I've got to say, it is like you're in Africa. Yes, yeah, I grew up in a big game reserves in Africa and this is the best job I reckon I could have. It, landscape wise, there's a lot of it that feels like home and certainly the types of animals you see around you. Chris is at Werribee Open Range Zoo, just outside Melbourne. He's been called out to help with a very special patient. You're worried about one of the cheetahs here? Coyote has not been eating as he usually does. We hope that an examination will reveal if there is anything wrong. And with your help, maybe we can, we can get there and figure that out today. We heard that cheetahs are one of Chris's favourite animals. And uh, we thought, why not give him a call so he can come and you know, help out with the whole process. So we've got Incasona on the left. Yep. He's got a white patch on his tail and Kaidi um, on the right over here. Brothers Inkasana and Kaidi have been residents at the zoo for more than seven years. Uh, so what's got you so worried? Well, I've just noticed with Kaidi, he hasn't been eating as, as he normally does. They normally have relatively small meals. They don't sort of go for days without food, like, like lions, for instance, eat a big meal and then maybe go for a few days without. These guys tend to eat most days. It's not eating is unusual for him, you know. I'm not, I'm not happy. I, I, I'm just not sure. I'm not, I'm not at ease with, with the way things are. He's so consistent with taking his food. It's very seldom that he doesn't. If, if any cat has a weakness, it, it's going to be their kidneys, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. with these guys, as they're getting on, the kidneys are going to become more and more of an issue. Hey, Sam. How are you feeling? Lisa is monitoring Sam constantly. The miserable dachshund has been struck down by a mystery illness, which is progressively paralysing his body. Good boy, Sammy. So Sam came in with a possible spinal problem. He had some mild back pain. He was a little bit wobbly in his back legs. You're not very sore. Hmm? What's going on? He certainly hasn't got any pain anymore, but I'm worried about this general weakness that we're dealing with something else other than a spinal problem. Good boy, Sam. Let's see if you can do this. Usually he comes running out of the gates to be fed and he just sort of stumbled out and then laid on the floor and wouldn't move. Very alarmed. What's going on? So, this is Chili. Um, yep. Chili hasn't been able to walk for about an hour and a half. This dog is massive. He looks like a big bear on the table and oh, it just looks so sad. Hey, Chili. Pretty flat, aren't you? Believe who's around the corner. Look who's there. Hey. Mummy. Hey, Bubby. No. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Thanks. That was such a sweet reunion. As soon as he saw Layla, he knew it was Mum, and he's licking her all over her face. It was gorgeous. He's really doing well. So, my advice is just get back out there. Definitely. Just, you know, it's always hard for owners who've seen attacks and our own pets injured, yeah. that we tend to want to wrap them in cotton wool and every time a dog comes up to him, you might start to panic. But the best thing you can do is try and be as normal as possible. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. No problem at all. Give us a smile. Oh, good girl, good girl. This is the bear they're talking about. Not so close. <laughs> <laughs> she can reach through there. Oh. Pepsi was uh, rescued from a temple and looked after by monks, and as is often the case, has a terrible diet before she came here. The fact she had a poor diet meant that her teeth just never really have been in good shape. Since she's come in here, she's had a long history of dental problems, and today we're determined to make sure there's no serious issues in there. Every now and then, I do just get a little glimpse of those, those discoloured teeth. Just the brown coating, the lower canine looks quite dark as mm -hmm. well. And we want to catch it before it turns into full abscess and then the bear can't eat. But there's obviously got to be a fair bit of care here because she can really turn. Yeah, no one goes on that side of the bars. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, beautiful. Let's go in here. A badly injured beagle has arrived at the Animal Welfare League in Sydney's west. Good morning. I've just got this really sweet little dog here, which is um, an injured stray, I'd say. She's got a bad limp on the back left leg. Alan found the stray limping at a local park. 
Yeah, well, she's wandering around quite happily, except that she's carrying her back leg nearly all the time, so I thought she may have some type of injury that needs to be assessed by a veterinarian. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for looking after her. All right. Hello, Lisa. How are you going? Can you please come down to our adoptions office? We just had a dog brought in. It needs to be looked at by you, please. OK, thank you. Bye. Who's that sweet little girl, aren't she? Hi, what's happening? Today, SASH emergency vet Lisa Chimes is volunteering her time at the shelter. Let's just scan her and see if she's actually chipped. No chip. No microchip, darling. Sweetheart, where's your family? All right, so I'll just take her over to the clinic. We'll have a good look at her and see what's going on with that leg. OK, great. Okay. Fantastic. Come on. See you, darling. I couldn't imagine anything more heartbreaking than losing your pet, but if they're not microchipped and there's no identification on them, there's no way that we can find out who they belong to. So the shelter's taken her over and now we're going to have a look at her leg. Hopefully there's nothing serious going on there, but we have to sort that out first. Hey, you really are limping. Um, who's, who's Jack? He's a surprise. <laughs> Just when you think your work is done with Denise, it never is, because somehow she's managed to sneak another dog into the room, and there he is. His name's Jack, he's got no hair. Yeah, his skin's nice, isn't it? So. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at you. Nine-year-old Jack is another sad case rescued from death row. What's interesting about Jack's skin is that it's so greasy, it's quite smelly, and the only thing that does that is an infection with yeast. So I think I'd be pretty confident saying that's what he's got. Mm. It's never nice to see a dog that's been treated so badly, and Jack is another in the long line of dogs that Denise has taken on. But the good thing with Jack is that he's got a condition that I'm pretty confident we can treat. What I think we should do is put him on some medication straight away. Okay. Some tablets. Yep. And they'll take away the itch. Yes. But importantly also, they'll treat the yeast. And I think if we give him some medicated baths as well. Yes. With a smile like that, he will be in demand. Yep. All right, and keep up the good work. Thanks, Chris. It's all right, I'll give you a hand with him. As a safety pin, would you? No, you're more of a, a liver treat sort of a guy. All right, the safety pin yes. isn't. Isn't. Isn't? Here. No. Okay. So, somehow, He's managed to avoid it, but the question is, I don't know where it is now. I have no idea. Oh, well, it'll probably just just drop somewhere then, I guess. Yeah. Hey, oh, you're a lucky little bugger, aren't you? Hey, I guess they are safety pins after all. <laughs> That's right. So Ox has been given the all clear, but Chris is still under pressure. He's a good-looking cat. Back inside, the campaign to make him adopt Sydney is relentless. <laughs> Look, I appreciate it, I do, but I don't know if I'm ready. But the fact is, my cat, George, only passed away a few months ago. He was 17. I'm just not ready to replace him. I mean, how do you replace George? As for Andrew, Come on. after a rough start to life, everything is finally falling into place. Good boy. Come on. He's settled in with Alice and he's just part of the family now. Alice, come here. Come on. You sit down too. He's a good boy. I can't believe his story and how resilient and tough he is, even though he's just such a gentle little soul. He's gorgeous. Andrew. Hey. The name was a funny thing, actually. At first, I thought, oh, gosh, do I change it? And then I heard the story about Andrew, the surgeon, that did some wonderful work on him. And um, I thought, well, fair enough. That's great. We can keep his name after his saviour. You're a mm -hmm. funny little fella. <laughs> that might just do it. Do you like bottles? Are you in any way interested in, in bottles? Are they something that you at least sort of so half <laughs> partial to? Oh, my God. <laughs> The thing that's nagging on my mind right now is that I can make Lammy as healthy as possible for the next few months, but ultimately she needs to be a sheep and she can't do that unless the rest of the flock accepts her. This, it's cute, but you know, it can't go on forever. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.